Linux subtopic under calculus is cubic graphs. It is important that father says good must do about graph sting a point I'm a chart of pair. For example, a cubing function will be a graph like this one. This is a typical example of a cubic graph. If this point is point A, let's call this point point B, let's call this point point C, let's call this one point D, let's call this one point E, let's call this one point F. Now, <coughs> what's important about a cubic function, Wuti, with the squares with the over stinger, a y intercept, stinger, I'm an x intercept. Stinger, a turning point, only three points. With a stability graph, stinger, a y-intercept. This particular case, I refer to it as the point D. Point number two, stinger, I'm an x-intercept, where this graph will cut the x-axis. So it's one, two, three. Ah, I'm a cubic function, then I'm an x-intercept, I'm on that, I'm a touch. So that's point number two, is stinger. So number one, the y-intercept, number two, Okay, what's important about these graphs, Uguti, at times in Akamuga in this form, you can also find it in this form. Uh, what does this mean? My graph I mean. It's an amount of amount of touch, Nakon. It's only that lower Allah as of the O2 FN. So in this particular case, amount of roots manga game at Hatu. It's one, two, three. Go back out two now. Remember when you do your, 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 your parabola, when you have a graph like this one, for example, and a graph like this one. If you are given a problem like this, x plus 1 into x plus 3 equal to 0, solve for x. What will be your answer there? With solving this one, you are going to have x is equal to minus 1, or let me just make this one negative, or x is equal to 3. So what is this saying to me? It says that this position, it will be minus 1, and that one, that side, it will be? Three. Now, let's look at the second one. If I give you, for example, x minus 2 into x minus 2 equals to 0, what will be the answer here? x will be equal to 2 or x is equal to 2. Ah, manga gama ama x intercept la au 2, 1, 2. Go to anjani, I have fun. We've got two equal roots where it is a turning point. So it is the same thing, nada. Whenever you have something like this one, we must know what time roots are tool, ayafana. So in this particular case, we don't have three distinct roots. That's now our x intercept time at time, because this one, it may go pay when you So our tool is your dollar. So important thing, let's see in the master to be graph, stinger, your y intercept, which is this case. Number two, stinger, my x intercept, our three, our tool plus a auto. Number three, stinger in, I'm at turning points. In this particular case, it will be this point and this point. But in this graph here, the turning points will be B and E. But what does this have to do with our calculus? Remember, calculus is the study of graphics. Now, then at our turning point, at this point, at this point, ah, at point B and at point E. Maybe let's take this step by step. Let's start with the first one. Y intercept. It will arrange on the y-intercept. How do you find the y-intercept? To find the y-intercept, what is the y-intercept? In this particular case, this will become your y-intercept, y-cut. How do you find the y-intercept? To find the y-intercept, send to x equals zero. Go be y-intercept, it will arrange on the y-intercept. It will arrange on the y-intercept, or x. So when I'm looking for the y-intercept, it will arrange on the y-intercept, x. So at this point, x is equal to zero. So whenever I'm looking for a y-intercept in any equation, I just simply make x above zero, then I'll find the value of y there, which will be our y-intercept. Okay. That's how you find the y-intercept. You make the value of x to be zero, 
then you solve for y. But how do I find the x-intercept? How do I find this? The roots, the x-intercept. I would choose the parabola, but the cubic graph, I would three. How do I find these roots? Actually, I will find the roots. How do I How do I find the roots? I make uy equal zero because uy is equal to uy is So uy is equal on these points. So I then equal to zero. So I simply make y equals to zero, then I factorize. I factorize. I make y equal to zero, then I factorize. Then I'm going to find two values of x if I'm looking for I'm an x intercept a parabola. If I'm looking for this one, I will find three values of x, three x intercepts. Another point that is important here are the stationary points or the turning point. Number one is t number one, and uh, an, an important point is this t number one here, the y intercept. How do we find it? We make x equal to zero. Number two, such am a x intercept. How do we find them? We make y equal to zero. Then after that, we factorize. The negative of factorize. I was using an synthetic method. Number three, it is the stationary points. What are stationary points? Are those two turning points? Are the two turning points? I want to talk about the stationary points in this particular case here. In this problem that I have here, in this diagram, the stationary points are point B and E, the turning points. Remember that at this point, the gradient is zero. There is no slope here. There is a slope when you look at it from this position, and I know that this slope is positive, this slope is negative, this slope is positive. But at this point, there is no slope, there is no slope, it is zero. So whenever I'm looking for I'm a, I'm a coordinates of this point, I simply make my gradient or my derivative to be equal to zero. And this one as well, I make my derivative to be equal to zero, then I factorize. I will get the value of x as about two x bands or taller, when I differentiate. I let my derivative be equal to zero. Yeah, I will have something as a parabola, a derivative yam. After that, I will find two values of x. Once I find the two values of x, how do I find the corresponding y values? To find the corresponding values, y values, you take the x over tolerella, no x over tolerella, each one of them over substitute in the original equation to find the corresponding y value. And that way, you will have the coordinates of these turning points. Remember, calculus comes in here when you're looking for the turning point where you let this point here, let the derivative at this point to be zero because, of course, there is no gradient here. Okay, that, those are the stationary points. And one more point that I want us to note in this section is called the point of inflection. The point of inflection. What is the point of inflection? When you look at this graph, for example, when you look at the graph of a cubic function, when you look at a cubic function, it's a graph like this. Uh, this is a typical example of a cubic graph. What is it that we notice about this graph in comparison to this one? We see that this graph is made out of two of these graphs, Amabil, and you pick a puzzle, and you pick a pants. Now, when we look at this one, it's a pants. Look at it. This one, it's a pants. If it be Kubeka, it be Zut. Do you agree with me? If it was just a simple parabola, it was going to be a graph, a Kubeka Ranji. Look at the second one. Now, let's pick a puzzle. This guy, do you have a Do you have a parabola? It was going to go up in this way. Ah. So, in these two graphs, as you come to see graph iota in this particular position, but you can see what it is made out of two graphs, and you pegge pansy, and you pegge pezu. Ah, I'm glad that I'm using my fingers. This position here is called the point of inflection. Where le graph pegge pezu, ne pegge pants, le shangana corn. In this particular graph here, you can see that this graph was going up, the other one was going up, the other one is coming down. This one is going up, this one is going down. So they connect each other here. So that point, where the concavity of the two graphs meet, concavity of the two graphs, and you concave up, other one concave down, that point where they meet is called the point of inflection. This, this point here is called the point of inflection. So how do we calculate the point of inflection? Remember, to calculate the point of inflection, in this graph, you find the second derivative. The second derivative. Remember that you've got to find the 
second derivative to be able to find the, the, the point of inflection. Here I'm a point I'm a bit now who x no one. Another point of finding the, 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 the point of inflection would be this one. You take your x value here, you add it to the x value here, then you divide by two. It will also give you your point of inflection. Now, let us, do, let us look at the exam question of, of this particular one. I've given you this one, which was taken from November 2008, which was question nine in that particular year. So let's look at a few questions that I have here. Uh, the first question, calculate the length of AB for two months. This is where A, this is where B is. Remember what I said about this point, about this graph. Now this is the table of the graph. Number one, you are intercept. We are as a total of You let x be equal to zero. Number two, yeah, my x intercept, among I will three, we are as a total of the Since we are zero, then we factorize. Step number three, we can be asked about the stationary points. How do you find the stationary points? We let the derivative be equal to zero, then we factorize, we are going to get two values of x. The other values of x will move into a substitute. We originally equated it to find the two corresponding y values. The next one is called the point of inflection. How do we find it? We find the second derivative. Now, all the questions that will be asking us, they will be referring to this. So this becomes your, 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 your skeleton. Now, let's look at the first question. Find the length of AB. What is it they're asking us in this class? Ah, before I even move on, this is what I'm given. This is the equation of this graph. And by the seventh one, they factorize it for us. When I see this, what is this saying to me? It is x plus 2 into x plus 2. Ah, Ogushkuti, Konya Lapo Ama Ama, or x plus 2, so we 2. We should do x is about minus 2. I think they put x about minus 2. This is the position where it is a turning point. x minus 2. Or should say, I'm not x now with 2 minus 2. In fact, we are taking it from that position. Oh, x to 2 minus 2. This is minus 2. We know the value of x here. Babu the length ka AB. X to minus 2, we now know. We've seen it from interbus factor as well. In other words, what is that? They're asking for um, x intercept in disguise. They're asking for this position, um, x intercept. We let this be equal to 0, then we factorize. So x squared 2 over 1, or minus 2, or x over 1, or 5 over 2. So in other words, this distance here, it is 5 over 2. What is 5 over 2? It is 2 and a half. 2 into 5 goes 2 times carry 1, so it's 2 and a half. So what is this saying to me? It says that a distance from the origin, from 0 to B, is 2 and a half, and the distance from here to A is also 2 and a half. Remember that the distance is always positive. Uma uksuala, 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 2, uksuala, 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 2 and a half, uksuala, uksuala, A, uksuala, B, uksuala, uksuala, 2, plus 2 and a half. What is that equals to? It is equals to 4 and a half. Therefore, the length of AB will be equals to 2 plus 2 and a half, which will then be equal to 4 and a half, or 9 over 2. Remember that we are not given the dimensions. It's 4 and a half units in this particular case, because it is a distance. All right, that was the length of AB. For two marks, we get that. Now that the solution was hidden here, and remember that the, the part that was being asked was the second part, looking for the x-intercept, the x-intercept. Even now, we already know what is the y-intercept of this graph, the point where this graph will cut the y-axis. Now, these then will be the y-axis, the constant term. So we know that this value here is 20. We know that from what we are given there, it is 20. And we know that our graph is negative. When our graph starts from up there, going down, we say it is negative. But when it is like this, we're starting down, we're saying our graph is positive. So that's why we've got a negative there, because our graph is negative. Okay, let's look at the second question. 9.2, find the x-coordinate of t. Let us look at point t. Looking at this diagram, which one is point t? Ah, this is where point t is. This is point t. We in point t now. Which section are they asking in this, in this skeleton? Station at the points. The turning point. This is the point, Awaifunai, which is the turning point. Fortunately, they don't want both coordinates. They only want the x coordinate, the first one. Find the x coordinate of t. Let's try and do it here. Sifuna do x ka t. 
How do we find the stationary points? How do we find the turning points? We let our derivative be equal to zero. Because at point T, there is no gradient. But man differentiate her length on so and so and gradient. But we know the value of gradient here. What is the value of gradient there? It is zero. Now, when we differentiate, let's find it. Let's find, when we are looking for point T, we let the derivative, which is gx prime, be equal to zero. Then we factorize. Let's do that. Let's find the derivative. Let's differentiate this. 3 times minus 2, it will be minus 6x with minus 1 there. So it's minus 6x squared. Moving to the next one, this times this, it's minus 6x. It's going to be minus 6x. Remember that's the derivative. Differentiate this. It's going to be plus 12. It's plus 12. This is 0. Then we let our derivative, this is our gradient, this is our gradient, we let it be equal to zero. Because at this point, there is no gradient. The gradient is zero. And when you differentiate, we're just looking for nothing else but the gradient. So your definition becomes important in understanding calculus. Let's move on. The next step, we factorize. Remember that we're just looking for the x coordinate, x yeto. Remember our buzwanga or mabi lemma point. This method that I'm doing here, it is going to give me both points. Both points are x. Gamma's the mu x will go two minus two, but I don't know the value of x at point t. That's why you are not being asked to find the, the, the coordinates of the turning point. You already know this one. It is minus two is to zero. But that one we don't know. Let's do let's do, let's do this one. <clears throat> Let us factorize. What is the first step when you factorize? The first step when you do factorization is to look for a common factor. You don't calculate it. You look for it. You look for what is available here, there, and there. It is six in this particular case. So in other words, we want to make it positive as well. We divide every term by negative six. If we divide this by minus six, we're going to have x squared. If we divide this by minus six, we're going to have plus x. If we divide this by minus six, we're going to have uh, minus two equals to zero. Are we together so far? Yes, we are moving okay. Let us factorize this. When you factorize this, what is it that we have? We've got x and x. My factors got two, I keep one. It will be two and one. Okay, because this is positive, so two will be positive and one will be negative. I'm going to remove this out of our way. What then do we have here? We can solve for x. Remember that this is equal to zero. When we multiply the number in bills equal to zero, one of them is equal to zero. It might be this one or that one, which is zero. That's what we write. So x plus 2 on about 0, or x minus 1 on about 0. What is the answer here? Take this on this side. So x will be equal to minus 2, or x is equal to 1. Ah, let's look at point T. So if you x ka point T, u x. U x, when I'm looking for x, I'm just looking for a position down here. What is the value of this one? But I know something about this value here. This value must be positive, because all x in the first quadrant are positive. Or x in this quadrant are negative. So in the first quadrant, or x bamba positive, and t is in the first quadrant. So it can't be a negative value, kat I've got two values here. One is negative, one is positive. And I already know that this one, a, must be negative two. Yes, it is negative two. But is this what I'm looking for? No, I'm looking for oga t. So this one, I indicate that it's not part of my solution. This is the value that I'm looking for. But you'll find the x-coordinate, therefore the x-coordinate, it is equals to 1. So that is the x-coordinate of t. If I was going to look for the y-coordinate of t, I was going to take this and substitute it where? In the original equation and get the value of y. But it was not asked.